Hey, what's up? Hello, I am Victoria, and welcome to my channel, and welcome to the Romance Takeover Readathon. Um, it is actually day two of the Romance Takeover Readathon. Yesterday was Monday the 1st, and I um, was on my way home from a polygon, so I <laughs> didn't vlog. Um, I had a six hour, five hour, it was actually five hours, five and a half, uh, five hour train ride um, home from DC and didn't get home until like 7 p.m. Um, and I was tired <laughs> so I didn't vlog but I did read a lot so I think I actually finished two books yesterday. I finished Lovers by Fiona Cole which is book two in the Voyeur series um, and it was okay. I wish it had just been an mm and not an mmf like there was a twist at the end that i wasn't expecting based on the synopsis so i ended up liking how it went at the end but i thought that the middle i don't know how to say it, everything without like like uh spoiling it because i don't think i think that the twist at the end is like actually a spoiler um because it's not in the synopsis but i enjoyed it I just didn't love it so I think I'm gonna give it like four stars maybe three and a half but I think I'm putting it in as four stars right now and I could go down later um but four stars that was the first book that I read and then the second book that I read was The Devil and the Deep Blue Sea by Elizabeth O'Rourke and this one was another one that I like don't know how I feel about it because there were definitely parts that I was like irritated with and wasn't a fan of um but I liked where it ended up at the end but this one I think I'm gonna give like three stars maybe three and a half stars uh, I liked Lovers more than this one. Um, this one just kind of irritated me in certain places. This whole series was not my favorite. I liked the first one the best for sure and even that one I gave four stars I think. But the third one is definitely my least favorite and this first one is my favorite. So it's like favorite to least favorite um, as the series goes along. So I definitely want to read more by Elizabeth O'Rourke because I loved Waking Olivia so much. So I'm just gonna have to like go in a different direction and just be done with this series because the series just overall didn't really work for me. But I did like the first one. Um, so those are the two books that I've read so far for this readathon. And so now I am currently reading a book that is actually a reread. So this was funny. I opened my library app to see if they had anything new and they had a book by L. Kennedy that I didn't recognize. I didn't recognize the cover or the title and so I clicked on it and I was like oh it's available to borrow. It had the audiobook and so I borrowed it and I'm listening to it and I got like 25% into it before I realized that I had already read it. So I went to Goodreads and I'm like looking it up and it turns out that L. Kennedy changed the cover and the title and re like issued, republished them. Uh, so it's a military romance that was originally pu published under the title, I think it was called Feeling Hot and now it's called Heartbreaker. And the covers look entirely different but I was already far enough into it that I was like I didn't really remember this book I'm just gonna reread it and because on Goodreads it says that I read it but I never put a rating so I don't know how I felt about it the first time um but I as I got further into it I sort of started to remember it it's a military romance he's a seal and she is in danger and her brother who is the hero's lieutenant um makes the hero watch out for his sister while his sister has this like ex-boyfriend crazy stalker guy um and so they're living together so that cash the hero can watch out for the heroine and it is i kind of like it so far like it's low pressure um so that's what i'm doing and i'm just in a low pressure mood so we're gonna see how uh, what books I decide to read. Um, I'm just going with the flow. This is a, I'd never even explain this readathon. That's how like tired and out of it I am. If you don't know, the Romance Takeover readathon is a re readathon where you read romance. That is the entire qualifications. I will link the um, people who run it in the description because I always forget one. I don't 
think that I have a lot of plans and this week. I think it's a week-long readathon. So I'll just keep you updated based off of what I'm reading, but it's just, I'm feeling, I'm feeling low pressure, low angst, just fun type of books. So I'm just going with the flow. Hi y'all. So I don't remember what I said the last time I updated you. I, it's the next day. Um, I was exhausted yesterday, um, and basically slept like most of the day. Um, or just like relaxed and just read and didn't want to get out of bed for most of the day. My body was hurting and I was exhausted. Um, so I have some updates for you. So I think I told you that I was reading Heartbreaker by L. Kennedy and that it was a reread that I didn't know was a reread until I already started it. Um, well, I finished it and I never rated it when I read it on Goodreads. Uh, when I found out that it was marked as read on Goodreads. But I actually kind of enjoyed it. I think I'm going to give it like three and a half, four stars. Um, it was definitely not the best thing that I've ever read. Um, but I had a good time and it was low stakes and low angst and just kind of like a good, fun, easy read. Which is exactly what I was looking for, what this whole readathon is probably going to be for me. So I finished that. And then I also finished um, and read the whole of... The Brazen by uh, Willa Nash, which is book three in the Calamity Montana series. Um, and I loved this book, gave it five stars. I, it's my favorite in the series so far. Um, it's about a girl named Kerrigan who had gotten a like personal loan for a business loan uh, from this rich guy named... Gabriel who she has known for a long time and she and it is like really close to so it turns out that she's overextended on this loan and Gabriel has died in a plane crash and Gabriel's grandson now owns Gabriel's company and Gabriel Gabriel's grandson is basically kind of an asshole he and his grandfather did not part on good terms um and he has a lot of like secrets and stuff that he's hiding um that he's embarrassed about from his life um and things that have to do with his grandfather so he's just like not in a good place in his own life um and his name is Pierce and Kerrigan and Pierce do not get along together uh do not get along at all uh very well um, in the beginning because Kerrigan is like, your grandfather gave me an extension on this loan and Pierce is like, I don't give a fuck, you're gonna pay this back. But Kerrigan has no money. Um, and so she's like killing herself trying to get all enough money back for his loan and everything. Um, and she scrapes together as much money as she possibly can and decides to go deliver it to uh, Pierce at his cabin in Montana that used to be his grandfather's cabin. Um, so we get, she gets there and she gives him basically all the money that she currently has to her name after selling her car and a property and all this stuff. Um, and he realizes basically what an ass he's been. And they end up getting stuck together, snowed in in this cabin. And their relationship changes while they're snowed in and stuck together and forced to confide in each other about all of the struggles that they've dealt with so far in their lives and I loved it. Their romance was great. I really understood like the conflict and what he was going through and how he really needed to like work on himself before he could work on a relationship with her and once he was like good and ready he came back and I loved that and he was like I'm ready to do whatever you need me to do to get you back um or to get to be with you and I loved it I loved him Kerrigan was just like really a powerful heroine um and I really liked her and I hope we get her sister's book her sister's name is Lark and she seems like a really cool character so I really hope that we get her book um because that would be really fun and I really loved it so I'm gonna give it five stars and now I am currently reading <laughs> The Bully by Will and Ash, which is the next book in that series. It's book four in the Calamity Montana series. It's just like really what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> um, and I am uh, quite a ways into it. 
I am like 80% maybe into it uh, and I am very much enjoying it. It is like a uh, enemies to lovers sort of thing but enemies with benefits so the heroine her name is Nelly and the hero's name is Cal and they have not gotten along forever they went to high school together and they also all went to high school with Pierce who was the hero from the brazen and the two of them Nelly and Cal have both recently decided to move to Calamity because Pierce moved to Calamity um, and so Nellie is actually Pierce's VP at his company and Cal is Pierce's best friend. Um, and he just retired from the NH, no, NFL football. He retired from being a football quarterback. Um, and Nellie and Cal do not get along. In high school, Nellie was a scholarship kid at their private high school and Cal has had literally everything handed to him and he would bully Nellie um, and he feels terrible about it um, but also doesn't because a lot of the things that like Nellie took there's a different side to the story of like he was doing the best that he could and like what he thought was the right thing to do as a 14 15 year old boy to make the situation because there were other sides to the story of the other sides of the situation that he saw that she didn't see. And so um, they also, for the last couple of years, have been sporadically hooking up. Their like anger gets so intense that like they have a lot of passion. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. I like um, Cal a lot. Um, I think that he is a very complex hero and has a lot of like it's very interesting to be in his head because when you read a lot of the times of the bully romances that I've read you don't it's like while the bullying is happening first of all and also it's you don't really get in the bully's head of like why he's doing what he's doing um and Cal, you're in his head, you're seeing things from his perspective, and it really makes you feel bad for him. Um, feel like, oh, like, what would I do in that situation? Would I do something differently than Cal had done um, when you see his side of the story? So I find it very interesting. It's not really a bully romance because the bullying happened back when they were in high school, and now it's just like they spit fire at each other and they don't get along. Um, but it's very intriguing, and I'm having a good time. Hey y'all, it is the next day, so Thursday of the Romance Takeover Readathon, and I can't remember what I told you the last time that I talked to you, but if I didn't tell you already, then I finished The Bully by Will and Ash, and I gave it four and a half stars. The Brazen is still my favorite, but The Bully was my second favorite, I think. I really liked it. I liked the way that the romance went. I liked both the characters and I loved how the hero like groveled. Um, and I just thought it was done really well. So I finished that one. And I think that was the last one that I read. And then I'm currently reading um, The Outpost by Devney Perry. Um, so this is basically just turned into like a Will and Ash reading or Devney Perry reading blog. Um, but I'm reading The Outpost. I'm almost done with it. And I am loving this. I am pretty positive. If the ending like goes well, then I'm pretty positive this is going to be a five star read. I love this. This is the Jameson Valley series, which I uh, didn't love the first one. I either DNF'd or skipped the second book. Um, I think I DNF'd the second book. And then the third book was The Lucky Heart. And I actually really, really liked that one. And then this is book four, I think. And it is about a, a woman who is a reporter. And she is doing this story um, and goes undercover with the Russian mafia. And then the uh, like takes them down um, and ends up like having to run and hide 
because the guys are after her. And so she retreats to Montana where she meets up with her friend Felicity, who is the heroine in The Lucky Heart. And their uh, Felicity's friends help her hide out in an outpost in this like tiny freaking little cabin thing in the middle of the woods. And she is like a big city girl and is like freaked out. She's like, bugs the woods? Fuck no. And I'm like, I relate because I, I am not an outdoors person. My whole family is. My brother is like so into camping and I'm just like, why would you want to lay on the ground where there's bugs when you could have a nice bed in like a hotel room and go on vacation that way? Um, so like I hella relate, but she has to hide in this like tiny little shack in the woods and with this guy who like runs the shack in the woods, like he is like a big outdoor ranger guy. He like is a fire crew worker and stuff like that. And he... Um, his name is Bo and they end up, it's like an opposites attract and they end up having a romance and she, while she's in this outpost, starts writing romance novels and it's just so cute and I really, really like it and I'm having a really great time reading it. So I am very much enjoying it and I'm prob almost done with it so it's probably going to be five stars. But right now I am uh, preparing to go live with uh, Avery from Ava's Romance Books and Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings. We're doing a live show, some reading sprints. So I'm excited for that. Today I went to Ikea um, and I got some stuff that I needed and I got a new bookcase because like I have piles of books on the floor and that's not working for me. <laughs> so I had to get another one of the like small, like short but wide ones, um, bookcases because that's all I have room for in my room. That's what I've done today. And that's what I'm about to do with the live show and I'm excited. So I'm going to finish the outpost on our reading sprints and I don't know what I'm gonna read next. So I will let you know when I figure it out. Hey all, good morning. It's the next day. I am in my car. I'm sorry if you can hear my AC going. It's 90 degrees outside. So I wanted to let you know that I finished the outpost. We, um, me, Avery and Rachel ended up doing a live show for three hours yesterday. Um, and so I was able to finish it and I started a new book. I started a Catherine Cowles book. I've been wanting to try Catherine Cowles for ages now. She writes small town romances, which I love. And Jess from Peace Love Books loves her. So I started Beautifully Broken Pieces, I believe it's called. And my hoopla had a box set of the first three books in this series for one like hoopla borrow, which sounds great to me because I only get seven a month for hoopla. So I was like as many, sorry, my arm's tired, um, as many books as I can get from my seven borrows as possible is the right move. So I'm started to listen to that. I am a decent ways into it, like maybe 20% into it. And I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, the girl in it, the heroine, is dealing with the loss of her mother. She is incredibly, incredibly distraught over the loss of her mother. Um, they, She was a single mother, and so the heroine now has basically no one, no family left anymore. Um, she has a good group of friends, but her friends don't really understand what she's going through. Um, and so she's just like, feels like she needs to retreat and she ends up st going on vacation with her friends and staying in the small town that they stay in called Sutter Lake. Um, I can't remember where it is. It's not Montana. Montana is Devaney Perry, but I think it's like close. Um, but the heroine is there. She ends up renting like a guest house on the property of a very well-known family in Sutter Lake. I mean, it's a small town, so like everyone kind of knows everyone, but they are like related to the founder of Sutter Lake, I believe is what they said. And um, the heroine meets the hero, who is the son of the people who own the property that she's staying on. And the son, he's the local like town sheriff. I think his name is Walker. Is that this book? I think his name is Walker. And uh, the heroine befriends Walker's sister. And Walker has understands what the heroine is going through more than anyone else. He, um, law, his childhood 
like love who he was going to get married to he had a ring and everything but never got the chance to propose was murdered uh back when he was in college and so he completely understands like the loss of like losing somebody that was meant the world to you and so they bond basically over this loss because the heroine is at a point where it's right at the beginning of the loss where she doesn't understand how you're supposed to go on. She doesn't understand how you're not supposed to like feel devastated every single day. And the hero is at a point in his loss where it still hurts and he still loves her and remembers her and misses her, but it's a manageable I need to live my life type of hurt kind of understanding. And so the hero is trying to help the heroine go through this horrible time that she's dealing with. And it's very cute and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's definitely a little heavier than uh, some of the other small town romances I've read. So I am going to continue reading that and I will let you know how it goes. Hello, update time. I finished the Catherine Cowles book that I was reading. What was it called? Beautifully Broken Pieces, I think is what it was called. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Like I said, it was definitely heavier than other small town romances I've read, but um, not that, like, not that that's a bad thing in any way. Just like be aware of that going in that it definitely deals with grief. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars uh, because there was like a suspense plot going on um like girls were missing going missing in the in their town and like surrounding towns and the hero who is the police officer didn't seem overly concerned about it and i just thought that was kind of strange and he like only really became super concerned about it when people he knew started going missing and i was like you're kind of a bad police officer if you only care about the people that you love going missing. Like, like five girls had gone missing and he's like, it seemed so unconcerned, but then like a girl that he knew from town, like his ex-girlfriend went missing and he's like, oh my gosh, I gotta find her. And I was like, oh, okay then, weird. Um, so I thought that was kind of strange, <laughs> but overall, I still really, really enjoyed it. Like that was just one thing that I, um, noticed and was just like, that's a little weird, but he was very focused on the romance. So it was definitely like romance focused. And then the suspense was like a side plot situation, similar to Devney Perry's books. If you've read De Devney Perry, um, but yeah, it was my first, Ka first Catherine Cowles and I really liked it. So I will definitely be reading more from her. Um, I won't, ha like I said, the book, when I borrowed that book, it was like in a bundle. So I'm going to try and read book two and three in that series before Hoopla like returns it. I think I have like 20 days or something. So, um, I'm excited about book two because the heroine from book two and the hero from book two are both introduced in book one and I really liked them. So I'm excited to see that story and what they do with that story. Um, and then I, after that, um, I finished that last night and I started, uh, Delilah Green doesn't care. I think that's what it's called. I have, don't know who it's by. Um, but it's like a popular illustrated cover book right now. And Avery was reading it on our live show that I did with, uh, Avery and, Rachel and Rachel had already read it and Avery was reading it on our live show and then Avery gave it five stars and the way that they were talking about it just sounded so good and one of my best friends in real life um she is bookish but reads more like traditionally published illustrated cover type books um and she read it and really really loved it so I'm excited to read it and hope I love it too um, I have read a couple of sapphic romances, not um, that many, but I've read a couple and sapphic romances that the, at least the ones that I've picked up tend to be closed door, which I'm not super a fan of. Um, but that 
I need to pick up more sapphic romances. Um, and so I'm excited to be reading this one um, because I've heard that it's actually like a really, really good one. So I'm very excited. I am only on like chapter two, so I don't really know a lot of what's going on yet. But basically what I know so far is that the uh, heroine is a photographer and her stepsister is getting married and her stepsister like hires her as her wedding photographer or her step stepmother hires her as the wedding photographer her, for her stepsister's wedding and they don't like if there's not that they don't get along but there's like a distance there they she doesn't it doesn't really feel like they're like family um they seem very like separated um so the heroine Delilah is like forced to come home for uh her stepsister's wedding and she doesn't seem happy about it so far not that I would be happy about it either because based on the way that they're treating her so far like it doesn't seem like um they treated her very nicely so it's giving me Cinderella you know like her father got married to the stepmother and then the father dies and leaves Delilah with a stepmother and a stepsister who don't like connect with her very much and like don't seem to have like much of an interest in hanging out with her so I'm getting Cinderella um and I'm enjoying it so far I mean I'm only two chapters in so I'm excited to continue reading it and I'm really hoping that I like it so this reading month already has gone so well I think I've read like five or six books in August so far um so good for me but I'm gonna keep going hello first I apologize for the shitty lighting over here the fact that this light behind me is making this horrible light above it and my appearance um but today is Sunday the last day of the romance takeover readathon and I wanted to let you know that I finished Delilah Green Doesn't Care and I loved it. It was really really good. It was my favorite sapphic romance that I've read so far. I really have to find others that are like this because it definitely wasn't closed door which I liked and it just like had like a connection and I actually felt a romance between them and not just a friendship because some of the sapphic romances that I've read are like really bad um, because they were not, there was no connection or like sexual tension or anything like that between the characters. It just felt like a friendship. Um, and then it being closed door, I was like, dang. So this one was so much better and I this is the kind of sapphic romances that I want to be reading so if you have any recommendations for sapphic romances that are similar to Delilah Green doesn't care please leave them in the comments below because I really really do want to read more but overall I really enjoyed it I really connected to Delilah I um am not somebody who trusts people easily and I'm not somebody who um feels very like open to love I guess um and so I really liked her as a character I thought her relationship with Claire was so cute I really really liked her um her sisterly growth with her sister relationship um with Astrid because I felt like Delilah really really needed that growth in their relationship as sisters to feel more whole like she had like this spot missing in her life where family was supposed to be and I'm so happy that her and Astrid were able to like work on their relationship so really really loved it I think I'm gonna give it four and a half stars um but yeah I very very much enjoyed it and it this read readathon went great I don't know about the prompts um, because I read a couple of books that I was like, okay, I'm reading a lot, but none of the prompts fit. So I did think, I get, do think I got a bingo, um, but I didn't really focus too much on the prompts and was more just trying to read as much as I could, which is, I think, the purpose of a readathon. So this was successful and I feel very good about this. So <laughs> that is going to be it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments below how you did uh, with the readathon. Did you read a lot of romance? 
but that's going to be it. So please like this video if you liked it, subscribe and stick around so you can see more content from me. And I hope that you have a great day. Mm -hmm.